you remember B.J. Thomas, the, the Christian singer? I see a quizzical look on Mark and Alice's there shaking her head, yeah. I mean, he, B.J. Thomas recorded a lot of songs. I'm going back to the 80s, right? yeah. And he sang a song that was written by Archie Jordan called What a Difference You've Made in My Life. Really a, a lovely, lovely song. Receiving the gift of new life from the Father through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. That should, that, that, that atoning work that brings new life absolutely should give us a new lifestyle. It should cause us to be able to say, like the Apostle Paul did, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. But being irrelevant, or being relevant actually, does not mean that we have to look or act like the world. This is one of the, one of the things that I see going on in the church all over the place. That, you know, to, to try and make ourselves relevant to what's going on in the world, we begin to act like the world. You don't have to have tattoos or piercings. You don't have to use vulgar language to reach the world for Christ. The marks that he bore, his pierced hands and the life-giving words of eternal life that flowed from him, are always reaching out to the world, teaching us the way to be relevant bringing the love of God and the light of his word into every place to raise and lift up. Relevant. That's what it means, right? You know, years ago, um, when Alice and I and Mark were in Belize together, we were, lived there as missionaries. And when we came back to the United States, um, Alice and I and another couple from the church that I had pastored, the last church I pastored in, in the States before we went there, we started a ministry called the M.D. Solomon Institute out in California. We were, we were based out there. And that was based on a vision that the Lord gave me to equip and encourage Christians to live a holy, that's with a W-H, a, a whole, and a holy, H-O-L-Y, a holy and holy integrated life. A life in which a person's business life was not separated from his or her spiritual life. That family life is not separated from workplace life church life from daily life. Our goal was to teach the best practices in all walks of life as defined by scripture to achieve excellence in all walks of life. Now that was born out of my experience way back in the, in the 70s as uh, a national sales manager. While I was a pastor, I was a national sales manager for a communications company in New York. And I basically, I taught all of the salespeople in that company. I taught, I, we ran that company, the sales force out of that company, out of the book of Proverbs and had an incredible, incredible experience. How God blessed, God, not, he blessed me both in the spirit and in the natural realm, along with everybody around me, which is exactly his promise in Deuteronomy 28. That if you hear his voice and you obey him, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you coming in and going out. He's going to bless you in the city. He's going to bless you in the country. He's going to bless your hand, everything you put your hand to. But he's going to bless your, your, your wife. He's going to bless your children. He'll bless your kitty cats, your puppy dogs. He will bless everything in your life when you are obedient to him and live according to the word of God. Where is that today? The word of God, his divine power is not about church. It's about everything pertaining to life and godliness. That's what the apostle Peter said. That's 2 Peter 1, 3, right? Everything pertaining to life and godliness, to life and godliness. So that sounds very much like the Lord lifting us up out of the pit, out of the miry clay of this world. It sounds pretty relevant to me. The problem has been over the centuries since the Sermon on the Mount was preached by Jesus or taught by Jesus Christ, that the church has compromised with the world in a way he never intended. And it has increased that compromise. And that's what has made us irrelevant. The people in the world can't tell the difference between us and them. They don't see the reality of the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. That, that I was going to say that has to change. I promise you that will change. 
because he is coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He is coming back for a righteous people who are living by faith. And he will do the work. The work that he began in us, he will complete in us. We may have to go kicking and screaming, some of us, but he's going to do that. Hallelujah. But